Beth Bird. I am, my company is Crystal Edge Technology Screens. Uh, we are the inventors of the Supreme Ambient Light Rejection 12, Supreme Exotic Ambient Light Rejection, uh, Exotic 15s, and the Advanced Ambient Light Rejection 17. And it was the blackout cloth, acoustic blackout cloth, which I have over here, and uh, the limitless black uh, screen paint. Soon, like I said, when I get a chance to get a lot, a lot of things moved around, because right now we got caught in the middle of a really bad snowstorm. We got hit with one storm, then we got hit with another storm, and um, I'm now ordering, getting some of my supplies in. A lot of my supplies are needed to take care of these orders, because I got orders from last week and orders from this week. So keep in mind, like I said, uh, orders will be shipping out soon. Just trying to gather and get all our supplies and so we get everybody taken care of as I always usually do. So, um, I already contact the driver because keep in mind, the driver has to drive up to where I'm at right now. And that's a bit of a distance. And then with all the snow and everything and hazards and all that stuff like that, we want to make sure everybody's safe going back and forth, uh, getting items that we need from them. We don't want anybody getting any car accidents or anything like that. So, everything is good. You know, roads are cleared up now and a lot of the snow is somewhat gone, but you know, it's, it's, it's passable. And with that being said, now we just ordered the containers today. They should be here tomorrow. I have to go order some other more supplies that need to make the product. And one of the key elements that we use to make this stuff is actually not here yet, but it should be here soon. I paid for that overnight shipping for it. So everything else is going well. T tomorrow, I think I'm going to be sitting down. You'll see all the containers, about 72 containers we laid out on the table. It's a lot. It's a lot. I told you before, the Black 12 is one of our highest from selling screen paints and gallons of that stuff went through the last couple of days a gallon gallons of that stuff went through also too um i also want to thank the individuals who've been ordering the exotic paints from us thank you so much for the support for that product we got a few people that came in to order the pink unicorn is that awesome or what so that just lets me know that i need to continue on that path if a paint starts selling and that's a bit of a wild card kind of product because you know a lot of people aren't going to have pink screens and green screens and burgundy screens but Eventually, there is a market for people who like those colored screens. So with that being said, we're just going to continue to add product on there, free color options for free with that product. All right, so this is the new screen right here that I have now for my setup for my workspace. I told you that I want it. It's not done. It's not done. Right now, it's green because it has the green technology on it. I had to find something that, that um, I had to find something that um, I could, um, I could uh, a piece of uh, a surface downstairs that would fit this area just right for the screen. I want to set up here with my ultra short though projector. So um, I did find this screen I had downstairs. I used it for testing for a few things, and the last thing was painted on it was the green. Now the only thing, if I do decide to do this as a green screen, because I do like the green, I like the way the green blends in with the background and everything with the red, how it reflects off the red. I like that. So I may keep it. And what I have to do is because. When this is in a slideshow right now, this is what you're seeing. But when I'm actually doing work on here, it just peeks over just a little bit over the edge. So I have to get some frog tape and trim it out. I'm still going to have about that much of that border to match my tabletop. See, tabletop and the border all match the same. So I'm just going to get a little frog tape and just trim it out just a little bit. And I think I'm going to go back over with the green because I do like the green. I like the way the green reflects. At first, I was going to do the black. But I think I'm going to keep it with the green. I like the way that green looks. So, as I said before, nice little easy setup to do. My table's low to the ground because I have a Japanese Neo pillow. So, mine's made so I can sit on my knees and I can actually work. And it's actually very comfortable that way. All right. So, let's talk about power in the system of electric free. So, yesterday, I, well, last night, I decided to hook up the battery power generator to this setup right here, which is actually... Uh, my um, ultra short though projector NEC. This is an eco mode. Um, this is running about 337 watts of power. Then we have my sub over there. If the water bottle is refilling my, uh, if you ever have a fountain in your house, keep in mind you constantly have to fill that with water because the water is constantly, constantly drying out. So that's why I don't think I'm a slob. I have just water bottles laying around. But anyway, so that's the sub and the sound bar, which is behind there. 25 for the sub, 25 for the sound bar. I got that mixed up. And then we're running the LED lights underneath. And then my hallway lights are running off LEDs too. So these are the hallway lights. I just keep these on burning all the time. They don't take any watts at all. So that's what we're running right now. And the fountain. And the gaming system down there. And fire stick, which you can't see because it's hidden behind that compartment. So I figured from running all this together, 
Um, and I probably, without the solar, I get about an hour, an hour's time without the solar. With the solar, I get infinity, which means these units can basically, if you have the solar system hookup, you can actually charge your battery or you can, um, you can charge while you're actually running your system. So you can switch it over to solar and I can run it completely off solar. And then at nighttime, I can run it off battery, however way I want to do it. But this system is going to be upgraded. So I'm going to upgrade that system to a, um, a Delta, I think it's the Delta Force. Yeah, the Delta Force unit, which will allow me to run my, I can, if I ran a TV off of it, I can run it for, I think it's two or three days or something. You can run a TV off that thing. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do with that. This right here is going to go into the gaming room. I'm going to add an extra battery to that because you can upgrade that to an extra battery. Throw a solar panel out the window. I can run the game room because the game room is going to use less power than this room. This room uses a lot of power, a lot of electronics going on in here. So first things first, we're just going to run everything off the basic battery right now. So I'm going to, let me see, unplug this from the wall. Hang like so. And I'm just running my theater pretty much in my fountain over there. And I'm going to take this unit and plug this into the back of the generator. So the simple fact that you can run the entire system. The simple fact that you can run the entire system off that battery, you know, for about an hour. And then the fact that you could run a solar panel outside, and solar panels are weatherproof. They're made out of this kind of plastic material. You see when I get one here, it's very, very, takes a lot of punishment. And they're kind of, they're, like I said, it's a solar panel, and I like the fact that it has grommets on each side here and here that allow me to be able to build me a frame and just put some weights underneath of it, and I can just lay it out my window, lay flat against the house. So... With these units, you can actually run the system, charge your battery, and also use everything in, in this area which you're using it with without, um, without saying, okay, I have to turn everything off, charge it up first, and then turn it on. No, you can actually charge your battery and run solar all at the same time and keep all your stuff running. So here's my projector right now. Nothing's hooked up to the outlet. As you can see, let me take this off. As you can see there's nothing running through my outlet. Everything is running through here right through my unit there so right here it'll tell you like how many hours you got right there to run it off and this will tell you the wattage footage that you're putting out this is also handy as you can't figure out what you're actually running in the house you can actually plug it into that and that will tell you exactly what you're running now with this unit right here I have a choice I can run up to 1200 peak or I can basically run up to 10 different items. So right now we are running the projector, fire stick, my fountain over there in the corner, my PS gaming system is hooked up to this right there, PS4 is hooked up in the LED lights, and we're running the lights out in the hallway. And this unit right here cost me around $350. Now the panels would cost you around $250. If you got the solar panels and an extra battery would cost you around around 260 270 you would get an extra 288 watts on top of that so that comes out fantastic so consider the fact that when i get the the delta the, the bigger one which is the third delta 1300 when i get that unit in here that unit would literally power everything in this area right now it'll power my office the security monitors the my um my machine for cleaning my air everything in here with no problem and I throw one of those uh, solar panels out the window I can actually run everything in this room all the battery off solar power with no problem
And as you see, because I'm running so run, running battery, I'm not going to have any dimness to my uh, my like dim, nothing's going to dim. Nothing's going to become. Uh, what some people think if you're running solar power, or if you're running any form of battery, that you're basically it's not going to be as bright as using electricity. Nope. And people invented this thing, freaking amazing. I got a chance to read through the instruction manual. What this thing can do is incredible. So right now, everything is running, all free power. Right there, my fountain's running, projector's running, LED lights need that. Got the sound bar. I'm going to turn my sound bar on real quick. Remote control to my sound bar. Let's see, I just have to track it down. But it's probably over on my desk. Nope, not on my desk. Oh, I'm going to the sound bar. Is this it? Yeah, I found it. So let's see how much power we're using. What are we getting out of this? Projector, sound bar, subsystem, the PS4 gaming system, water uh, for my fountain on the side, LED lights and LED lights in the hallway. We are using about a wattage output, sorry if you can't see that, 285. That's it which isn't bad considering the fact that my projector is 337. And we have about an hour on this. Well, we have 59 minutes now, but we have to get about an hour out of that. Now, if I was running this through solar right now, if I had a bigger battery in here and I was running through solar, I need a bigger battery. And if I had solar, I could run this by itself, just like that, without even adding any upgrades. But because I need the bigger battery in here, because I need to run this projector, I need to run my um, printer, I need to run my computer, I have my speaker system right here, I have my network system right here, I have my TV here, I got my security system over there, I got my air cleaner here, I got a lamp there, I got a lamp there, then I got my coffee, a warmer there, and then in here I got my, uh, I got my uh, tea room in here, for my coffee pot. So with that unit, I'll be able to run everything in this room. And since the sun actually comes up on this side, I'll be able to basically drop my, my uh, well actually the solar panels are quite huge. Just wanna let you know, they're not small. What I saw from the video, they should be able to attach from here all the way across from here. So they're quite large. And that's what will run this entire room Completely power free. What? I'll have to do something too. And start the video off correctly if I don't have my curtains. Because that's the one thing I love about my technology the fact that it's true ambient light rejection technology. So I do this every morning. See how the sun comes up on that side? It'll slam the side of this house. This is where the sun rises, it'll hit right about here. The hardest thing is when you're running solar panels, you got to figure out where the sun's going to be coming at, where it's going to rest, and where it's going to rise. So I'm blessed that on this side of the house, all along this side, where all my panels are going to be at, the sun gets up and hits the side of this house and sets on this side of the house. I might even do some research and design myself a battery storage next. So once I get the initial system set up, then I'm going to build me a battery storage system using the exact same equipment. Because the beautiful thing about this technology right here, you can take the batteries and you can link them together. So I can get maybe like um, four more of those uh, of those uh, thir um, the Delta 1300s, have them all linked together to make one big battery for just for storage. Just to have for the sake of just having it. Because, you know, all I do is throw a panel on it and I'm just charging it from the sun. Oh, by the way, let's get right here. This is what now I have my other screen here. You can see how nothing gets affected by the ambient light. There's a lot of light that comes in from my window. It hits this screen and then hits this screen. This is what I'm talking about the peace of mind of having ambient light rejection technology, real ambient light rejection technology. When you get up in the morning, that all that light comes through your windows. I like plenty of light coming through my window. I do not like to be in the dark. 
but I don't have to be. So that's going to run. I'm going to run that down to like the battery down to around 16, and then I'm just going to charge it up, and I'm going to take it to another room and do that room next. Because that gives me an idea of exactly how much power I'm using per room, so I know exactly how to size it up and how much power supply, what kind of power supply we need to run it. And this is right for you want to know, this is the acoustic blackout cloth that we saw on our website. Already pre-coated, don't got to paint it, take it out of the box, strap it to a frame and you're done. There's my speakers in the back. I love that. All right, so let's pop out of here. So this is the next room. I haven't figured out what projector to use yet. These are my Chrissy's. I haven't figured out which one to use yet. I think I'm probably going to use the... Let me use the LSW. I'll use that one instead. I'm going to use the other one. So that's what I'm going to use. I'll put these up. I don't need them right now. But I'm going to use that one. That's the 720p model. Mind you, that's a 1080p model for Chrissy. Right there. I don't need it. That's the 720p version. That's what I'm using. That's why, because the technology does all the work. I don't need to run it if I don't have to. Um, that's the one for the portrait mode. This one's because the screen's gonna be rebuilt. So read this screen will be rebuilt for a portrait mode. So the only thing I have in here, I'm pretty much I already know from the door what this stuff is running from the door. So there we got one and two. I'm not gonna run both these at the same time, one or the other, when I'm gaming, because my chair only goes one way. When I'm here on this projector, this is for the motorized screen. Painted with 12 technology. And when I'm here, this screen is painted on the blue, which I might convert the blue to something else. I haven't decided yet. Or I might do it with that new um, that new exotic, um, that blue star. We got a name for it. This stuff is pretty crazy that we're designing. You'll see it pretty soon. Very, very soon you'll see the stuff we're designing. It's a Metallica kind of bluish kind of, it, it's weird looking, but it, it's cool because I don't know what. I can't wait to start working on it. But first I got to get my customers taken care of first. Get your orders taken care of first. Then we'll move on to that stage next. We got to wait on that. And then we're going to take that canvas material downstairs. We're going to build a screen out of that. We're going to do that demonstration also too. All right. So not much in here to run. Just the two projectors in here. Um, so I'm going to use one or the other. I'm going to have both at the same time. And then we have the sound bar, which is 25. The sub back there is 25. So that's only about 50 watts right there. And then the LED lights are running. The LED, watt, the LED lights are like 7 watts at the most. That's all there, seven watts. You might get some here that are eight. That's basically about it. But there's nothing really running in here. And I got my computer over here. My computer's power supply is about 240. That's it, that's all we run in here. So I can take that battery system I have in here, put an extra battery on it, you know, just for fun, put an extra battery on it, and take the solar panel, throw that out the window right there. Because I don't want it here, because the sun doesn't come up on this side, it comes up on this side. So I put that little um, charging station here. That'll run this room with no problem. So the only upgrade I got to do with that battery is add another extra battery. And then I got to put in a, um, I got to put in a, another a solar panel for that. Now as for the LED lights here, these are all, these are LED lights. Now these are different kind of LED lights. When you go to like a uh, office or a part, uh, department store and they got these really bright LED lights, that's what these lights are. These come with a remote control. They come with the ability to be able to dim them, change your settings, and all that other cool stuff. I got these for around, I get paint on everything. I got these for like $27. These I think, are super bright. I run these all day, all night. It's not costing me nothing. It's like seven watts to run them. These things run less power than the lights I have in my ceiling right now. So that 60 watt light bulb up there, and that's a seven watt system right there. Save money right there. So I'm not done with this yet. I got to finish lining all this through, and then. I have my, uh, I left it in here. Oh, other room, sorry about that. Here it is. These right here, you see, but they got smaller ones for hiding the cables and all the wires and stuff. And they can paint these, they'll blend in with the interior, looks real nice. So I'm gonna finish that out. I'm gonna bring those probably about to here. And I'm bringing the other set from here, probably about right there. I don't want the entire hallway well lit. I want some of the areas to stay dark because I need for this to light up because this is the gaming room, which I'm working on here, finishing this off. 
And then for the hallway in here, I don't want any more light passing through here. I want this area to be well lit, but I want this area to be a little bit darker because this is where the steps blend down and you got the steps that light up. The whole downstairs is in blue. The ceiling glows in the dark with all kinds of stars and stuff. I want that to stay that way. I don't want any of this light passing over and affecting that. As for the bathroom, well, the bathroom, I have lights in here. Never been inside my bathroom, have you? It's a small bathroom, but I'm only one person. Who else? Let me hear. Yeah, lights in the bathroom, but um, I don't use the lights in there. I really don't. I don't even know the purpose of having lights inside the shower. I don't know why. I just don't use them. I never have. But I am what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take the same system here, or I might do the bathroom in all blue. Yeah, because I got this whole underwater. You know, I like fish. Everybody knows I love fish. So I got my fish here i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do the bathroom in all blue and i might even put one of those projectors at top or at the bottom probably connected down here that makes the whole entire like it's underwater the waves and stuff yeah i think i'm gonna do it with the bathroom right there i want the bathroom to be something different i'm not gonna have another light put in there like a uh another um another white light put around the top and then put a blue in if i want to change it back and forth because i got a shave in there too and i have to be safe from shaving my face right but anyway, that's a project on its own. It's going to take work. I'll change it as I go along. This room right here runs the most power. This is, I call it, I'm going to call this the tech room. This is pretty much what it is. All my main equipment is in here. So I'm not going to run that. That's for outside. That definitely is going to be strictly for outside. I just want to turn it on, play with it a little bit. And now I'm done with that. That's going outside. I already have a separate, that's going to have its own dedicated setup. So another Dell 1300. Uh, um, with a solar panel strictly for that setup outside when I start doing um, demonstrations. We're going to do this projector. We're going to do a couple of these. I just had somebody come in and buy two gallons of the black screen paint and I advised them they're going to do outside uh, movies and gaming and I told him a good projector for that is the Sony VPO FH30. He got his with a remote control which is good because remote controls are really hard to come by but he picked up one. I actually have three of these but they picked up one of these. These are fantastic for outside yeah, these are good projectors, and they work amazing with our screen paint. All right, so um, in here, pretty much, what I run in here, well, LED lights, number one. Uh, we got seven watts each. Going to add these up because a lot of LED lights in here. And the big boy project up there uses 448. It's interesting how I can't remember certain numbers for certain things, but I can remember literally all the wattage in the house now. I don't know. It's just stuck on the head now. But that's 448 of power right there for the Christie big boy. This is around 300 something watts right here. Not precisely on that one. I can't tell you one off the bat. I know it's three something, 337, something around, that, somewhere around that range or four something, but it's close to around that much. So I only, I don't use these. These are just here because I need some place to put them. And the PS4, pretty much, I got to plug that in because I'm curious how much watts I use. And this is off of the VR system right here when I, when I get time to use it, which I never do. So I'm just going to be running this gaming system. Uh, the speaker system over there, which is the same speaker system I have throughout the entire house. They're around 50 watts to run that. Over here, I got the same computer I have in all the other rooms. This is one I paid for around, I don't know, around all together with the graphic card and all that good stuff. Keyboard and all, about 480 bucks. That's 240 watts. I know this isn't running nothing, so I'll get the rating on that. And the chair, usually the chairs usually take 58, 58 watts. A lot of you not. If I plug this up, this will be 58 watts. I got two of these massage chairs. I got one in here, and I got one in the gaming room. This one takes 58, um, and it never powered down and up. I just basically use a massager, that's all. Um, the other one in the back, basically, um, I moved that one up and down. That's 58, so that's nothing. This, I have to plug up to figure exactly how much this is taking. This is probably taking nothing, and the mini computer, I know it's definitely taking nothing. So, if I got myself one of the, another one of the, um, the Deltas, uh, 1300 I'll put those links up to show you exactly what power supplies I'm looking at getting that thing could run this room with no problem and like I said with the window being on that side again I can throw my panels out on the side and I can charge this room for nothing it cost me nothing to run this room so yeah it is going to cost me a bit attic I don't never use the attic the attic is for storage and besides it freaks me out man I, the attic freaks me out it does it just freaks me out every horror movie always starts in the attic or in the basement Unfortunately, I'm not bothered by the basement. Now downstairs, because I had to map all this out and find out exactly. I'd, sometimes I had to walk around with that charger upstairs 
to plug it in stuff to figure out exactly what I was using. Same ultra short throw projectors we have upstairs, 337 watts. Uh, any LED lights you see in here are around 7 to 12 watts. That's it. That's all they run. Your LED lights are literally cheaper than the lights you run over top of your ceiling. And I don't never use my ceilings. I'm going to use it at nighttime. I have all LEDs running through the house. So fish tank with LED lights, that's nothing. The only thing we have in here that we're running is the sound bar and the projector sound bar is 50, uh, sound switch 50 and the projector 337. This room is already knocked out. So if I get one of those units, the 1300, I could run this room and this room at the same time. And we're gonna get a masonry drill. I'm gonna punch a hole through here, drop a panel there and drop a panel right there. That'll run these two rooms with no problem. So when we come in here, this projector only uses 260 watts. That's an easy given. I actually ran this room actually running this the system I had upstairs with no problem. Soundbar, this is an old system I have. That's mean this is gonna get rid of this and get me another one of those over there because they're running those. This is an older model. This uses 240 watts of power. Where the model I have in there only uses 50. So I'm swapping these out for the 50. And then we have the um the chair right here. This is a, the movie sofa. We're reclining. All this is motorized. You would think this would actually charge up a lot of power. It doesn't. Quite shocking. I thought it was going to be like 250 to 300. Nowhere near it. When you turn it on, the power, the motor running, it's probably around two watts, two or three watts. That's it. The minute you operate one of these and you go to turn it on, it powers up. The highest it peaks to is 58. That's it. That's all. So every time I want to turn this up, it just peaks at 58. And then when I bring it down, it just goes back to like two or three. So that's all that's running in here. The popcorn machine I'm not running because I've never ran the popcorn machine since I bought it. Since the day I bought it, I never used it. It just sits in the corner as decoration. And the reason why I don't plug it in is because the light from it that heats up the popcorn is so bright, it throws off the balance in the uh, in the theater room. So if you get one of these, keep in mind the lights are a little bright. You may want to have that in a farther corner so it doesn't affect the environment that you're using your theater setup in. So this is nothing. So one unit, two sets of panels. I can run these two rooms, no problem at all, power free. The kitchen, on the other hand, interesting enough, the uh, deep fryer runs more power than anything in here. Yeah, even more than the range. My range is around 1200. That thing runs 1800 watts. It has 1800 watts to run that. The refrigerator runs around 250 to three. That's pretty much basically about it. And keep in mind, you're not gonna use a lot of power off your refrigerator because the refrigerator is constantly cutting off. It comes on, and then it cuts off and it cuts on cuts off back and forth so you don't have to worry about that running constantly all the time that's an energy saver lg so i don't have to worry about that so uh don't use the, i use the oven with the oven's gas so that's not gonna cost me anything with electricity and i unplug that thing i don't even bother with that anymore since i got that the air fryer is a freaking uh heaven sent i run everything up there if i even bake in the air fryer i'm mean, gonna bake any things when i got one i was curious what other hacks people were doing with these machines and people were really baking muffins and cookies and all kinds of stuff in the air fryer. So I did a few things and it works out quite fine. As a matter of fact, I bought myself some baked goods and baked me some cakes. So anyway, um, this is 1800. Oh, excuse me that. I'm burping here. My fault. That's 1800 watts. So the only thing I run in here is the refrigerator and that these are the only two things I use in here. I hardly ever use that at all, period. The only time I bake is less, we got a uh, Christmas time or a holiday. But other than that, I don't even bother with that. These are the only two things I use. So that's nothing. I can run it off the system in here and the LED lights, which should be off in here. Anytime you see LED lights, seven watts, seven to 12 watts. That's all I've seen in the LED lights, about seven to 12. So we don't run anything in here at all in the kitchen, period. So since I'm not running that much here in the kitchen, that gives me enough power to run, um, well, yeah, I'm probably, I might put a separate unit on the deck by itself because I got some stuff I'm running on the deck. It's going to be pretty crazy. So I think I'm going to leave the kitchen stand along with that dedicated line there. And then what I'm going to do for the deck, because now what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to get rid of the barbecue grills. I can't use barbecue grills. I have respiratory issues. That smoke really messes me up. And sad to say, I can't barbecue with it anymore. So I'm going to dismantle these. Uh, put these back in the boxes or the owner when she takes over this place I'm just gonna basically just give her these or just buy her new ones. I don't know. I don't care. But anyway I'm gonna set myself up a kitchen outside. This is what I'm, I'm tickled pink about. I'm gonna set me up a nice little table 
We're going to do the nice countertop, little cabinets and everything. I'm going to set up cabinets right here. I'm going to have it looking like an outdoor kitchen. It's going to be so cool looking. I'm going to put out there maybe a, uh, I'm going to put an air fryer out there. Definitely air fryer is going up there. Another one, but a smaller one than that one, less power. I'm definitely going to put out there a little toaster oven out there. So I'm going to make my pizzas and stuff like that. A blender out there for making smoothies and milkshakes. And maybe a small refrigerator right over there that I can set up. So I can have my refrigerator. I can have my um, um, refrigerator. You can get outdoor refrigerators too. Actually, I looked all that up. So a nice outdoor refrigerator or cooler. Doesn't make a difference. One or the other. Doesn't make a difference. So you can mind, you keep mind with that unit. You can run AC and DC power at the same time off that unit. So we're going to set up a nice little kitchen area over here. And then over there, since I won't have to use that stand anymore because I had to set my projector on there, I'm running ultra short though this year outside on the 135 inch screen outside. So I'm gonna set this whole area to look like an out indoor. Let's see what way to understand it. It's gonna look like someone took my living room and blew the windows and doors off of it and just set it outside. So I went out here to look like an actual living room. I've even seen patio bookcases. Now they're not real books, they're fake books, but to give off the look like you have a real outdoor kind of setting. So that's what I'm going for this year out there. It's going to actually look like I'm walking into an outside living room. And I found on Amazon, Amazon sells these lamps that with these lamps, they look like everyday outside lamps that you have for your home, but they're solar powered. Oh man, I can't wait to set all this up. So that's my other project for that. Okay. So for right now, got to get you guys taken care of. Uh, containers will be here tomorrow. 72 containers got ordered and we got enough for to get everybody's orders taken care of and any extra splash overs. Um, let's see what else we're gonna be building. We're going to be changing the screen upstairs in the gaming room to an acoustic screen. That is the horizontal screen. It's gonna be changed over. That screen's gonna come down here. We're gonna use that screen for demonstration, so it's gonna be over there. I gotta take this mess downstairs anyway. Uh, and what else? Where's the material? At? Oh, the uh, canvas material. We're definitely gonna build a screen out of that. So I think I have a surface. Let me have a surface down here. Yes, I do have a surface down here. Oh, it's behind my trash wall. I got to take all this trash out today. <sighs> Let me get this ready for today. So I can get all that trash taken out. There we go. We got a screen right down there. That's the one I was hanging on my wall. So we're going to rip and strip all that out of there, tear it all out. And then what we're going to do is tear it down to the frame so there's nothing left and then what we're going to do is we're going to reapply the other surface on it and we're going to paint that and do a demonstration of that screen right there i think i'm going to paint that with the black silver i'm going to use that because i haven't done enough of the black silver i like that particular form of technology because it's a very affordable screen paint at 87 dollars for our customers and that is one of the most interesting screen paints that i like because due to the fact that it's gray, but it produces an amazing dark contrast, so especially for gray screen. If you haven't seen those demonstrations on that technology, that technology is quite amazing, but you know, we have it at a mid-level. Let's go upstairs and check our battery. These lights all need to be off. Even though it's seven watts, it needs to be off. So pretty much when I'm done, I got a bit of a budget for myself, and my budget for myself it's going to be around 1500 a month to do this. It shouldn't take much. So let's go check and see. So we're at 59 right now. Or 59%. And we already have about 30 minutes left. Still running. All this is no problem. So imagine... Once I get all this set up and I get my panels out there, I'll be able to run all this for free. And that's one of the things when I was doing the research on this, when I was checking out the research, like, there's so many units, there's so many of them out there. And I was doing the research on them. And one of the things that was most important was I didn't want to get a unit in here that was going to be able to like, like okay, every time the battery went dead, you couldn't use nothing at all. You had to stick it out there and you had to charge it or plug it in. I wanted something that would completely take me off a grid. So having this unit being able to run the solar and charge a little bit of the battery and run the system while it's being charged off the power outside at 100%, that's what caught my attention on buying one of these. Because that means I can get free power from the sun 
and run my equipment. And keep in mind, before all this came up, before these people came with this idea to design these little units like this, if you wanted to do solar power, you got to look up how you had to do solar power. It was a lot of dry cell batteries. Like you had to have a ton of dry cell batteries. You had to build yourself a battery bank. And then you had to run the solar system, the solar equipment. You, I mean, you were hooking up tons of wires, and you had to reconnect that into a converter so you can convert that DC into AC. It was a lot of work to do it, and a lot of batteries to do it. But just a small little unit by itself, and if I want to run this through solar, I saw the um, demonstration. You just take out the panel. It has two lines connected to it. You connect two to the back of the panel. The other two you can connect into the unit, and you're done. Let me show you real quick. We have the things already. Uh, also, too, also, too, you don't have to have a serger, that serger right there, to plug it into the back of that, you don't have to have that. It automatically has a built-in serger, it also has a power protector on it, which means if you put something on here and it doesn't meet the standards of the battery, it's not going to blow out, you're not going to burn out your battery, you're not going to lose your investment. This little thing's going to pop up, it's going to say it's protected, and it's going to shut your system off, that's all it's going to do. You just disconnect the item, if it's not going to run off of there because you don't have enough juice to do it all right so this right here comes with these are cables you get automatically this plugs in on the side this goes into your car right there in case you want to jump your battery and on top of that if you want to also too you don't have to worry about getting out to charge your battery and on top of that on the side of this right there there's a whole bunch of usbs on the side and show it up close but usbs we can plug in your cell phone tablets or whatever else you want to plug to the side of it and run it there's also a quick charge on it too and also too if you're running solar right you can also choose solar power your battery too on your car too or your rv or whatever you might be camping out in that's good to have uh this unit right here is for your solar panels so they give you the cables for the solar panel isn't that freaking cool so you pay a lot of money because some companies like say if you want the cables you got to you got to charge an arm like knowing you need these so this plugs right here and these are your cables for your solar panels, that's it. So you already have them already. Right there. And then, I think this is the contraction for, let's see. Also too, there's an app for this too. I gotta upload my app. So it's an app, I have to go in and update my firmware, which I didn't get a chance to do. And also too, you can control it with your own, your cell phone. All right, so I think this unit right here, this unit, one of these units, yeah. This is the unit right here. We can actually link your batteries together. So, say if I want to make a bigger battery and I want to link my battery to another battery, I can do it with this. And I can also manage and control my power or consumption or consumption of whatever I'm using, uh, basically through my app through my cell phone. Is that cool? So you pretty much are building your own little power station in your home. So, like I said, by this summer, I'm not paying Pico. They're going to get very little bit of money out of me, very little. I mean, the most they'll get out of me is for my outside lights, which I do need, which I can swap those out for solar panel. Um, my lights actually, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think my lights for my, um, my, uh, my backyard lights and all that, I'm just going to install in solar lamps for lights for those. Um, I can easily run my cameras off solar too if I want to, but now I'm going to run it at the backup system. I like my cameras. My cameras are pretty cool. Uh, other than that, the only thing I have to run in the house using electricity we need the washer dryer because I'm actually putting a unit in the basement too. Actually, the one I'm putting in the basement is much bigger than the 1300 Delta. It's much bigger. That one's going to allow me to run my washer and dryer in the basement. And if I can get my, the fellow who's going to come down and have an electrician, uh, the people in this place, they have an electrician who's coming out. Is their electrician? I'm going to see if I can talk to him to see if he can basically get the electric use for the hot water heater and all that off that and onto that system because if you can do that whoo i'm definitely power free then i am 100 power free but there's a few things i still have to run in here and i want to pay them a dime nothing at all i tell you something that turning point was looking at that pico bill at fifteen hundred dollars i'm like oh no this is not gonna work and even if i did pay the electrician to come in and have him put in um two electrical outlets that's still money i gotta pay back to them either way I mean, look at that. When you really think about it, just think about it, think deeply about it, that's free power. When you think about it, all that free power out there is free. When you think about it, 
And now, I mean, that makes it so much easier because the Tesla systems that they had were extremely expensive. I looked into that. I did the research on the Tesla Powerwall. It is very, very expensive. It's very expensive. But the fact that you could do this from your home with this little unit, and these guys just started this on Kickstarter. On Kickstarter a while back, they made these things. Fantastic idea. Hats off to them right there. But just think about it. You can build your own little power system, and in the end, you save a lot more money. So that means every month... I'm going to save about $1,000 to $1,500. That's usually what my electric bill comes up to. In the summertime, it's around six to $800. So that's extra money now I saved for myself. I don't have to pay them anything. And the lease, if they can't get the, if they can't get the, um, the heating system or whatever it is attached to the power um, unit I'm going to put downstairs, that's pretty much still nothing. The most I'm probably going to pay him is probably twenty-five to thirty. I'll take that any day over fifteen hundred to a thousand dollars, easily. Now the next thing I got to study is start studying water filtration systems because I've been studying that for a bit. And like I said, I got a niece who's in the military up in Texas, and she does not pay anything for water. Of course, she lives out in the middle of nowhere, and they have to use that unit anyway. But I'm learning from her on exactly how to use systems to filtrate and clean water because then again, that's free. It's 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 a free element. This is kind of, to just leave it off of this note, it's imagine that, you know, you're, you're paying your bills when you have free energy around you constantly all the time. And you just have to figure a way to utilize it. One thing I saw, which was pretty cool, I saw a fellow who was using a, um, when people use mills, but well, back in the day they used mills to basically what it would generate energy and the energy would turn the mill and that would cause you to be to grind up the grain in the mill. You know what I mean? Same thing like you would have with windmills. They were designed for grinding grain, free power. They design these things, actually to run them. But when you think about when people have waterfalls or small waterfalls near their, near their homes and they have a generator that's constantly spinning, that's actually charging up, uh, transforming, transforming, transforming power, all that's being run. It's free energy. And there's a fellow who actually built himself a mini little, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Like, it was a little, like, turbine. A turbine that, that water was actually generating that energy. And it was enough for him to power a few things in his home. That's what I'm saying. That is freaking amazing. That's what I'm studying. Hydroelectro energy. That's what I've been studying. I say a whole lot of crazy stuff. I'm always curious about stuff like that. But I figured out a way. Never got a patent, but I figured out a way how to develop a unit that actually would run off everyday rainwater and would actually, um, it's kind of hard to explain to it, but actually self-generates itself through its own force of water. So bottom line is it's kind of like if you were to actually have the ability to design a waterfall that constantly could run on a unit that constantly could charge a um, a, uh, a, a, a um, can I say I can't explain it because I have to write everything down. I have to build it. It's kind of hard for me to explain things. I usually have to build them in order to show you what I'm doing. But it's a unit that I was designing, and I never got around to finishing it. But it allows for water to pass through it, and how the water is actually being transferred from one section to the next. It allows it to cause a waterfall effect, which causes it to hit a turbine that actually causes that to spin. And when the turbine spins, that generates electricity, which allows you to be able to power the motor that allows the pump system to repump the water right back up and back over again to run the system back over again to regenerate again. Ah, there we go. There's a better way of putting it. So, yeah, it's a unit I was designing. The only problem is I would never get around to patent it due to the fact that if you ever saw a patent, uh, 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 what do you call it, a mechanical application for a patent, it is a nightmare. But yeah, put a couple of those units around and it would constantly keep the water in flow. So as long as there's water in that unit, that water is being reused over and over again, it's being generated as energy. So all you're doing is just taking the water, you're transferring it down, and as the water drops down, it powers the um the windmill that and the generator, which has the windmill attached to it, and as that's moving, that generates power, and that power basically connects to another unit that allows that to be able to pump the water right back up where the water can't go this way. You're gonna have to have a system to pump it back up, and that brings it over top and it spills it back over again. Constant flow of energy. And you can solar panel that or whatever you want. Heck, since they got these units out here, I can basically solar panel use that. I don't know. It's just a couple of crazy ideas that go through my head from time to time on figure ways on how to get things for free. You know, and I just can't see myself when you go outside and you realize you've got all these elements around you that will allow you to have this stuff for free. And then you got companies who figure out a way how to make money off it and they charge you a ton of money. You want to find out something really interesting, study the Hoover Dam. Study the how the Hoover Dam became the Hoover Dam. 
as a source of power. He's not charging people for that. Yeah. Anyway, well, with that being said, um, like I said, uh, I'm always looking into studying new stuff and new ways to utilize things like, you know, developing screen paint that can be used in fully lit environments so my customers don't have to sit in the dark. I can work on my screen, I can watch my movies, and I can be in a fully lit environment. Never have to worry about my screen washing out or fading. All right, people, thank you all for taking the time to come in and listen to some of my crazy ideas. Um, I'm going to be, uh, once I get all the orders out, we'll start working on the next stage of the exotics because I got some other products I'm going to add on to that that's going to be free. It's going to be a free color option. Uh, we're going to work on, um, oh, I forgot. Oh, my goodness. The 17s. The 17s are supposed to have two more screen paints attached to them. Yeah, the, uh, the dark slate, we got to do that one. We got to get that out of the way, and we got to get that ultra bright because the ultra bright is freaking insane. That stuff will work on anything. I mean, literally anything. You can work that stuff on knockoff projectors. Yeah, just about anything will run off an ultra bright. Anything will run off it. All right, with that being said, thank you all for your time. Um, I'll keep you updated on the shipping information. I think the next uh, videos I'll be doing will be strictly about nothing but shipping. So, And after that, like I said, if you have any comments or questions, I mean, my website's there. You can contact me through my cell phone, not cell phone, but through my, uh, my landline, business line, or you can email me or whatever, and, you know, no problem at all whatsoever. You know, I'm, not easy, I'm easy to be reached. All right, with that being said, thank you for your time. I have to go, and God bless.